Assalamualaikum and very good day to everyone. Here we meet again. We are still in Chapter 2, Cellular Respiration. My name is Mandam Siti Hajar Binti Nur Ashuddin and in this lecture, I'm going to explain on the aerobic respiration, which is the topics of Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. So let's begin. Are you ready? All right. Citric acid cycle consists of eight steps. Remember, in glycolysis, we have already 10 steps to be remembered, to, be, to memorize. Then you have pyruvate oxidation, three steps. And so now in CAC, we will learn another eight steps. I use CAC as a short form. Okay, CAC is also known as Krebs cycle. So it is a name after a person who discovered it in 1973, Mr. Hans Krebs. Acid A that been produced from the lean reaction now will enter the citric acid cycle. Okay, the cycle takes place within the mitochondrial matrix. And definition for this process, it completes the breakdown of pyruvate into carbon dioxide. So from the glycolysis, okay, remember you have two molecules of pyruvate, then it continues with the link reaction producing two molecules of acetic A. So therefore, each acetic A will enter the CAC. And as you can see here, the cycle oxidized organic fuel derived from one molecule of pyruvate for one cycle. So one cycle, one acetic A as an input will produce three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, two molecules of carbon dioxide, and one molecule of ATP. But you are having two molecules of acetic A from the reaction, right? So to complete a breakdown of glucose, two molecules of acetic A as an input for the citric acid cycle, it will produce six NADH, two FADH2, four carbon dioxide, and two ATP. And mostly in CAC, it involves a series of enzymatic reaction for process oxidation and reduction and also decarboxylation. Can you remember what, what is oxidation and reduction? Okay, so it is a process of losing electron and also gaining electron. What about decarboxylation? Remember, decarboxylation is a process of removing the carbon. So CAC again, I would like to highlight it consists of eight steps and it is catalyzed by a specific enzyme. The acetyl groups of acetyl A will join the cycle by combining with the first um, a compound known as oxaloacetate to form a citric. So six NADH and two FADH2 molecules will be produced as they are. They are as electron carriers and it will be transfer energy to form ATP via ETC in the next stage. So let's start with the citric acid cycle. So the first step is the condensation process where this acetic OA is from pyruvate oxidation will combine with the oxaloacetate to form a citrate. As you can see here, acetic OA is two carbon compound that combine with the 4-carbon compound of oxaloacetate to form citrate with 6-carbon compound. In this process, in this reaction, coenzyme A is being removed. And the enzyme that helps this fraction is known as citrate synthase. Why we name as citrate synthase? Because this process is producing the citrate, synthesizing the citrate. Alright, next step is isomerization where this citrate okay do some rearrangement on the structure by removing and adding the water molecule here to form an isomer known as isocitrate okay and this reaction is catalyzed by aconitase all right the next step is the third step oxidation and decarboxylation process okay as you remember oxidation is a process of losing electron decarboxylation is the process where uh, the carbon is being removed so isocitrate is six carbon compound as they do decarboxylation it removes a carbon 
by releasing the carbon dioxide to form alpha ketoglutarate with five carbon compounds. It also occurs process of oxidation, which means isocitrate are losing electron, where NAD plus will take up the electron and reduce to form NADH. So what is the name of the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction? As you have the reduction process here, the reduction of NAD plus, the name of the enzyme should have dehydrogenase. So any reduction process, you naming the enzyme with dehydrogenase. So the first name of the enzyme are referring to the substrate of the reaction. So the substrate of the reaction is isocitrate. So the enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. Easy, right? Let's proceed with the next step, which is step number four. Again, a process of oxidation and decarboxylation occur in step number four, where this alpha ketoglutarate will losing electron. As they're losing the electron, NAD plus are reduced to form NADH. Also with the decarboxylation, where this alpha ketoglutarate with five carbon compounds are removing the carbon by releasing the carbon dioxide to form succinico A, which is four carbon compound. Okay, not to forget the addition of coenzyme A into the direction, making the product known as succinyl CoA. What is the enzyme that helps the process? Again, to be highlighted, all right, you have a reduction process here. So the name of enzyme must have dehydrogenase. And looking at the substrate, so we have uh, alpha ketoglutarate. So the enzyme is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Why you need to add in the coenzyme A? Remember, the function of coenzyme A to make the structure of the product become more active. Okay, so now we proceed with the step number five. Uh, but before that, okay, I would like to highlight, so the number of compound of succinico A is four carbon compound, all right? But all of these are also four carbon compound until they rearrange to form oxaloacetate, which is four carbon compound. What does it mean here? Okay, means that start from step number five until step number eight, there is no more decarboxylation process occur. There is no more removing the carbon because you already produce four carbon compound. Only the rearrangement of four carbon compound to form an oxaloacetate. Okay, so now we proceed with the step number five. So step number five is where succinyl CoA is converted into succinate. The energy release is used to phosphorylate the GDP, all right, to form a GTP. Then GTP will transfer the phosphate group to adenosine diphosphate in order to form ATP. Okay, and this process is known as substrate level phosphorylation, and reaction is catalyzed by succinyl CoA synthetase. All right, so let's go with the step number six. Okay, in step number six, it is an oxidation process. Okay, where this succinate will oxidize to form fumarate. Okay, oxidize means losing electron. So there is an electron carrier that receives the electron and reduce. So here in step number six, okay, there is another type of electron carrier involved, which is FAD, flavin adenine dinucleotide. So FAD will receive the electron that have been donated by succinate and reduced to form FADH2. This is a reduction process. So it's a tip for you to remember the enzyme. You must have dehydrogenase. So looking back on the substrate, you have succinate. So the name of the enzyme that catalyzes oxidation process in step number six is succinate dehydrogenase. So next step. Step number seven. Okay, in step number seven is an hydration process. Okay, fumarate will become hydrated and converted into malate. 
So this enzyme that helps or catalyze the process is known as fumarase. So very easy, it is named after the name of substrate fumarate here. And the last step of citric acid cycle, step number eight, okay, malate, okay, with four carbon compound, will oxidize to form oxaloacetic. Another process of oxidation occurred here. So when losing electron, there is an electron carrier of NAD plus that receive the electron and become reduced to form NADH. Okay, and this process in uh, uh, to regenerate the oxaloacetic for the cycle to repeat again. So the enzyme that helps the process is called malate dehydrogenase. Why malate dehydrogenase? So because you have reduction process occurred here and looking back at the, at the uh, substrate name is malate. So you have malate dehydrogenase. So now one cycle of CAC is complete for one molecules of acetic OA. So remember you have two molecules of acetic OA. So another acetic OA will run CAC again then one glucose is completely break down, okay? So as you can see here, one glucose undergo a process of glycolysis will produce two molecules of pyruvate. And from this two pyruvate, it continue with the link reaction producing two molecules of acetyl A. So each acetyl A will undergo CAC. So CAC happened twice. Okay, so therefore, the number of the product together with its, its intermediate products must multiple with two. So let's take a look on the cycle again. So how many times oxidation takes place in citric acid cycle? So there are four times. Okay, so you have in step number three, oxidation. Step number four, and then step number six, and lastly, step number eight. All right, so but how many electron carrier has been produced per cycle? Okay, so there are four electron carriers. So can you determine it? All right, here. Okay, the first electron carrier that we produced is here in step number three, NADH. Step number four, NADH. For step number six, producing FADH2. And the step number eight, it produce one another molecules of NADH. So you will have three molecules of NADH and one molecules of FADH2. How many times decarboxylation process occur per cycle? So there are two times where it is also in step number three and also step number four. Okay, and how decarboxylation occur? by removing the carbon. So how many carbon dioxide per cycle? You have two molecules of carbon dioxide per cycle being produced. Now let's take a look on the next product of ATP. How many ATP is produced? And what types of mechanism to produce the ATP in CAC? All right, so the answer is one molecules of ATP here in step number five. Okay, so one ATP will be produced per cycle by using the mechanisms of substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so all of these are being produced for one molecule of acetyl-CoA. Alright, so it means that it runs for one time cycle. So if you have two molecules of acetyl-CoA, okay, from two pyruvate, in glycolysis so it will undergo a second time of citric acid cycle and all of the intermediate products and the products here must multiple with two okay remember that all right so let's proceed the summary of the citric acid cycle okay remember in citric acid cycle it also requires oxygen that's why we say that it is an aerobic respiration okay each turn of the cycle will give off three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2, two molecules of carbon dioxide, and one molecule of ATP.
But the cycle, cycle must turn twice from one molecule of glucose. So for each glucose molecule, it will need to turn two turns of citric acid cycle to produce 6 NADH, 2 FADH2, 4 carbon dioxide and 2 ATP. So the two ATP produced in citric acid cycle are using the mechanisms of substrate level phosphorylation. So, all right, that's all for this topic. I will stop until here. If you have any questions or you may ask uh, your lecturer for further explanation and further discuss. Okay, in the next video, I will continue with the last stage of aerobic cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. So stay tuned guys. Thank you. Bye. Assalamualaikum.